we are going to have an emergency sliding lesson, okay? <laughs> The, the the curriculum demands it, so sit down. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. For those of you that already know the basics of sliding, again, I'm sorry, but it's on the curriculum. We need to cover everything. We're gonna go over the sliding basics first and then go into the other stuff later. First things first, how do you slide? You s oh, one second. So sliding is as simple as sprinting and then crouching. That is literally all it is. You just sprint and then you crouch at the same time. When that happens, uh, I can release any buttons I want and it will continue the slide. Uh, so you get locked into this animation during the slide. You can also crouch in the air and you will slide when you hit the ground. If you slide near a guard, I think it's within five meters, uh, the guard will hear it. So as you can see, he can hear that. So that's the absolute, absolute basics of sliding. You sprint, you crouch, you slide. You can crouch while sprinting, while sprint jumping, and you will slide when you hit the ground. Although you need to have enough speed to do it, like that. And as long as you're not within five meters, guards don't give a shit. Simple as that. Very, very basic stuff. Moving on to slightly more complicated things, because it's not as intuitive, but you kind of get a feel for it the first time you come across it. You can't slide multiple times in a row. If you try it, you go a reduced distance depending on... I think it's a cooldown, so I think it's just you have to wait a certain amount of time for the slide to... Uh, Fully reset because otherwise you go this kind of minimum, uh, this kind of minimal distance. Now something that is a bit more complicated but still fairly intuitive, I feel, is how to stop yourself from sliding because there are situations where you maybe start sliding when you don't want to. Like for example, if you cr try and crouch like that, you can see I stop myself from sliding. But maybe you don't want to slide and you just accidentally start sliding. The simple way of stopping that very, very simply, is to hold backwards. As long as you hold backwards, you stop sliding. And that's great and all, but that can't really be used very well, um, because you have to actively move backwards to do it. It's very useful for stopping your movement like dead in your tracks, which is kind of 99% of how you ever end up using that. It turns out this isn't the only way to stop yourself from sliding. Um, there is a second way to stop yourself from sliding, which is to press the jump button. So as you can see, if I press the jump button, it does the exact same thing as if I tap S, except that it makes you stand up. That's the core difference between these two is if you press the jump button, it makes you stop moving, but also makes you stand up. And that maybe doesn't seem very important, uh, but it turns out the fact that you can slide and interrupt the slide by pressing jump kind of fucks with a lot of things in terms of how sliding works. In my opinion, the most major thing is that uh, the fact that you can slide multiple times can now be kind of negated. I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute, but first of all, let me just quickly go over, uh, go over detection, because this is tangentially related and it's also very important. If you slide, I'm pretty sure there are two different kind of detection states at the very least. So if you're crouching, then that's kind of the crouched detection state. Whereas if you slide like that, uh, that kind of puts you into the same detection state, so guards and cameras will detect you slower if you're crouching or if you're sliding, and I think it's the same right for both. It might not be, it might be slightly different, but it feels about the same. The, so, so basically, if you're crouching, you're in this one detection state, but if you're standing, you're in the other detection state where you can be detected faster. Just like in Payday 2, if you uh, sprint and then 
crouch jump like that, you get detected slower because you are crouching while in the air and the game treats you as if you are in the crouch detection state. So guards and cameras will detect you slower than if you were just sprinting normally. Those are the few important things that we need to understand right before we move on to anything else. The fact that if you slide, you can press the jump button to interrupt the sliding animation. And the fact that if you are crouched, you get detected slower. Those are the two important things here. Um, and if we put those together, uh, it basically means, yes, you can do that to have reduced detection while in the air. However, what if we press jump twice? Okay. Well, that didn't really do much. What if we press jump twice while sprinting at the same time? Well, now we can start chaining slides together. And there's no limit to the speed that you move. It doesn't interrupt the slide speed. Yeah, so you can have start chaining slides together to be detected slower than normal, but still have the movement speed of sprinting. And literally all you have to do for this is just slide, jump twice, slide, jump twice. That's it. I don't understand why this works like this, because they've clearly done what they can to try and prevent you from sliding multiple times like that, but they just... If you just cancel the slide by jumping twice, it, it you can just keep doing it. Which is bizarre. I don't know why that works like that. But there's also another slightly weird aspect to this that I think is maybe less useful, but it's pretty cool. It, it doesn't really look like much unless you're aware of what you're looking for, but it it looks cool, it feels cool, but I think in terms of practical use it's not actually that useful. Uh, and that is, very simply, if you slide and then so this is this is really cool. I'll, I'll just try and do it like once or twice first so you can kind of see it and then I'll try and explain it because it's really hard to explain but um, so it should be something like this. Right like that. Exactly like that. So I just jumped there right but if I were to jump normally I think it was like there-ish? Uh, and if I was to try and sprint jump it's almost the same distance but it's not quite the same distance. So you can jump further sideways by sliding first. There are like so many levels of what the fuck going on here but when I actually explain how this works there are so many steps going on with this that I am not entirely 100% sure how to explain. I just realised the game audio is muted as well. I'll, I'll mute it. The first step is you slide, obviously, and then you need to press jump twice to cancel the slide and jump. Uh, but then you also need to hold sprint the whole time if you don't hold sprint, you don't get the full speed out of it, which is weird because you can't normally sprint sideways like this. But if you hold sprint and jump sideways out of a slide, you do get the sprint speed. It's really bizarre. Then you also need to hold the sideways direction while doing it. However, the thing that makes this so difficult is the fact that there's a very particular, very specific timing window that you have to hit for this to work. The easiest way for me to, ex to explain what's- or to show this, rather, would be to open Rise of Synapse real quick. So if I set my E key to spam the, the spacebar, and if I set it to spam the spacebar 20 times a second, so if I hold the E key now, I will now just- I, I'm now pressing the spacebar 20 times a second when I hold the E key. If I try and do what I just did, but I hold the E key instead of manually jump, watch what happens. I go far forward, but mostly forward and not very far to the side. And I think what's happening here is that you actually have to wait because obviously if I press jump, I stop moving. But if I uh, spam the jump button, like that, 20 times a second, I think what it's doing is I'm still carrying the momentum from the slide and and because I haven't like stopped moving for long enough I keep the forward momentum and I can't translate any of that into sideways momentum. So I think what you need to do is you need to have a long enough delay between pressing space the first time to stop moving and space the second time to jump sideways that you're able to slow down so that you 
don't carry the forward momentum into the jump, but then you need to somehow carry the forward momentum sideways. I don't fucking understand how any of this works, I'll be totally honest, it makes no sense. Um, but what I can say is that if I use that hotkey to spam jump 20 times a second, I, that happens, but if I change that from 20 times a second to 6 times a second, uh, so this is, uh, I think, 166 milliseconds between each input. I tested a few different numbers and 6 was the most consistent for what I'm trying to do. Uh, and if I hold E now... That was way further than when I was doing it manually. Um, because when I was doing it manually I was only going about to the end of this, but that's how I went over here. So there's a very particular timing window that allows you to jump as far as possible. And I'm not entirely 100% sure what that is because I wasn't messing too much with getting the timings. Um, if you want to try and test this yourself, I would probably recommend starting around 200 milliseconds between each input if you want to try and make a macro to test this. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, 6 times a second or about 166 milliseconds gets you pretty good, pretty consistent results. There's another thing to keep in mind here, which is that the speed that you get out of this sideways jump also depends on when you jump out of the slide. So if you do it immediately, so if you try and jump out of the slide immediately, you can sometimes get like a kind of uh, like decent jump, but sometimes you don't really get a good jump out of it. But also if you do it super late, you don't go very far either. So, 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 to reiterate how this works, you need to slide, you need to press jump twice to, first of all, the first jump cancels the slide animation, and the second jump causes you to jump sideways, and then you need to do all of that with a very particular timing where the second jump is delayed by about 200 milliseconds after the first jump, and also you need to do it early enough into the slide that you actually get speed out of it. But, but not too early that you don't get not enough speed out of it, and not too late that you don't get no speed out of it. There are so many levels of precision involved in this that it's fucking ridiculous, and I don't know why. And I kind of love it. <laughs> if you want to make this easy though, like I said, you can just set up like a macro to automatically um, spam the jump button. And that's that gives you massive distance pretty consistently. Uh... But again, I don't really know the practical benefit of this. Like, I don't think there's really much practical benefit. Maybe you could use this in certain situations to, like, jump really far. I don't know. The problem is there isn't really a good way of me testing that for me because there isn't really a lot of space to get a good run up. But I think it is slightly further than... At the very least, it's comparable to a full sprint jump, which is kind of nuts. Especially given that you are literally doing this from a standstill sideways. Although, like I said, I think the more practical benefit of of cancelling uh, sp uh, sliding is to do this, where you can chain slides together to go in a straight line. Because like I said, for stealth this allows you to move at full speed without... Uh, it's, it's, it's basically just like the old um, crouch sprint jumping compared to two, basically. Move at full speed, like full sprint speed, while being in the crouch kind of detection state so people see you slower than normal. Although it is more difficult to do than the Payday 2 version because you have to press space twice uh, and it's kind of an awkward set of inputs to get your head around I think but once you kind of get it down it's fine I guess. The only real issue of it is that that slide does kind of eat some of your speed if you need to change direction so you kind of have to do a bunch of random bullshit. It's really finicky to move around like this. Now I want to show you the pinnacle bullshit which is where I was testing this the whole time. This is possibly the most ridiculous showcase of this that I can give you. So... Hey. Oh, yeah, I was able to get all the way from there to there without anyone detecting me and then hey. this guy finally saw me. And that's because he was walking in that direction. If he wasn't walking in that direction he would have had no idea. Oh, my E key's still bound wrong. Hold on. That is really fast! Because if you were to try and do this without doing that... Like, I don't even fucking know how long it would take. Um... I've already removed that civilian now, so I can't really check, but like... You have to wait for the slides to reset. You have to actually deal with the cameras a little bit. And there you go, you're at the other side. 
Whereas, you can also just do this. Uh... <laughs> this is payday free now! Because if I was trying to sprint here, like, there's no chance I'm getting past the cameras like that. Right, pretty, pretty simple in terms of concept. Okay. And in terms of execution, it's just that um, getting the inputs down can be a bit tricky, but um, yeah, watch this. I don't think any of those detection meters went above half. The thing is, I, you can definitely use this, right? Like, if I were to... That's a guard, okay. I just crossed this whole room in, like, two seconds. Like, this is... Like, this is how fast that is, like... That camera isn't anywhere near a threat. And I can just get across this whole room. Like, what the fuck? 